What's up guys? I'm making a video today. Um, it's a Graco Ultramax 2 495. It's the older style generation of sprayers. So you got what you can see here. You actually got it connected by a connecting pin, which I've already taken out. It looks like that. And um, all you do to get that out is you take a screwdriver, you lift up on that, uh, you lift up on that and uh, that connecting pin will come right out. All right, what you want to do is before you work on the sprayer at, it, at all is you want to make sure you dis, you want to relieve any pressure in the system and then you want to make sure your sprayer is unplugged, safety first. Um, you don't want to get hit with 3,300 PSI, I can promise you that. So while your sprayer is already connected, you go ahead and loosen this retaining ring for your intake hose. Go ahead and take your hammer, hit this free. You want to uh, loosen your packing nut, which is right up here. Let me zoom you in. There's a packing nut right there. You loosen that, take your connecting pin out. Otherwise, you won't be able to unscrew your assembly. And then loosen this retaining ring right there. That big ring looking guy. All right. It's great to have your sprayer lifted up in the air in order to, in order to get this part out. I'm going to take this and try to just hit it out. As you can see that, as you can see that broke free. Um, so now that's that's out of the way. And now what you want to do next is you can just take your foot valve, your inlet housing, whatever you want to call it, and we're just going to unscrew that guy off there. And I'm going to take it, dump it right quick. Get all this nasty gunk and stuff off of there. And, um, boom, put that guy back in a minute, but we're going to set him over there near our vise. A couple key things you want to have. You want to have a dead blow hammer. You want to have a ball peen hammer. You want to have a set of dental picks. You want to have a screwdriver, flathead, and you want to have a couple wrenches. And it's a good idea to get uh, some of this Loctite for when you go to put you know, take your outlet valve out, put one little drop of that on the threads so to ensure that it never slips or anything like that. All right. Um, I do want to give a shout out to a guy named Brian Sumac. He's, he has a bunch of videos on how to take a couple Graco and a couple of Titan airless sprayer fluid sections apart, uh, repack them and put them back together. I watched several of his videos. He is a true grease monkey. He can, he can explain it better to you than I can, but I'm just making this video to help people also see it all right now that that packing nut is loose we're going to go ahead and disconnect there's a line here in the back we're going to go ahead and take our little crescent wrench and we're going to loosen that guy up A lot of times is a when you go to make a video it's a lot easier if you've already pre-loosened stuff like this up so you're not wasting your viewers time because then they'll think that you don't know what the hell you're talking about when you actually do but it's just hard to get to some of this stuff it's a reason guys that they have made uh these pumps differently now with the easy connect and slide right out you know all right but you're just going to take it now that everything's disconnected and you're just going to unscrew this guy out and it's going to come out just like so all right this is your whole fluid assembly if you don't know um and i completely uh stand beside Graco sprayers i also stand beside titan they're all the same to me it doesn't really matter um but they the fluid sections are slightly different um but anyway that's just that now i'm gonna pick the camera up i'm gonna move you guys uh, i recently purchased a uh camera or a phone holder 
to better make videos and stuff like that. So, um, while we take a second, I'd like to tell you guys that you can look us up on um, Brush Brothers on Facebook, uh, Instagram under Young French J. Um, we're on a couple of different uh, social media platforms. So, but we do interior and exterior repaint stuff like that. So check us out sometime. All right, you guys. Um, let's go ahead and just break down. Um, let's go ahead and just break down this uh, fluid section here. This right here is what they call a packing nut. You're gonna unscrew your helm. All right, that's your packing nut. You'll notice that it has an O-ring on here. When you get a new set of packings, or you go to get it, um, you can order it from Graco, or you can go get it from Bedford which is the only aftermarket um, packing kit that I would get. Anything else, like Brian would tell you, is junk. I've used it. I've tried it. It's, it's junk. So Bedford or Graco. All right. So that ring, O-ring right there will come in a new set of packing. Now, here is what your pump assembly will look like. It connects in the back right here to the sprayer. This is your actual piston. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go put this guy in a vise. A vise is very critical in this situation um, because without a vise, you cannot, you cannot do what you need that needs to be done. You can't get the amount of force and pressure holding it with your bare hand that you can, what a vise would give you. All right. I'm just down here grabbing a few things that we're gonna need. To take this thing apart I'll show you guys all right that's what a dead blow hammer looks like you're gonna want a three quarter inch wrench for your outlet valve when you go take it off it's always a good idea to have some grease vaseline same thing all right let's go ahead and take you're gonna take your dead blow hammer you're gonna hit it on top of this piston and you're gonna knock it from the bottom out always hold your hand under there because you don't want to scratch dent this piston in any way shape or form All right, let me grab a rag. As you can tell, I'm always disorganized in some of my videos, but I'm just, I'm not a professional at making videos. I just do this to help other users because a lot of this stuff is self-taught. And let me, let me tell you, sometimes this thing can be a headache trying to, to learn it on your own. All right, this is what your piston looks like. Whenever you take it out, you want to check it over, take your finger out, run it up and down the shaft, and you want to make sure there's no cuts, no gouging, no hourglassing effect. If it is, that indicates there's a problem with your packings, or it could be other things as well. All right, this is what your packings look like. It goes V-ring, which they call Teflon, leather, Teflon, leather, Teflon, all right? So that's what your piston looks like. We're gonna set that guy to the side. Actually, we're gonna bring him back. This is your outlet valve here. When you go to redo these packings, there's a little ball inside here. So when you go to put this guy in the vise, you wanna put it at a slight angle. Also, never put any section of this shaft in a vise. You wanna put it on this little connecting pin up top you never want to put it on this i've done that i've scratched them gouged them got to get a whole new piston you don't want to do that so we're going to vice it down nice and tight this is where your three quarter inch wrench comes in handy notice how i have it at a slight angle you're going to put this guy on here and it takes usually takes the strength of god to break that free it didn't this time because I never put Loctite on it when I took it apart. And I realized that my arms in you guys' way, I'm sorry for that. But we're gonna go ahead and continue with the video. All right. Like I said, this is your outlet valve we're unscrewing here. It's loaded with paint. You can see that it's been used. I don't, I don't like making videos on something that's been used that hasn't been used before because 
when the hell are you ever going to repack or spare that's never been used? That's never going to be the case. All right, this right here is called a wiper, and that will go on the outlet valve. You can see that. You go to push it down. If it's brand new, it'll click. This one's old. I don't have a brand new packing kit, so I'm just saving it. But if you were to buy a new one, that would click just like that. All right, we're gonna set that guy to the side. Now inside here, like I told you, there's a tiny little ball. All right, you take it out the vise, put your hand there, a little ball come out, and that's about what it looks like. You wanna inspect that for gouging, anything like that, if there's gouging, well, I'm sorry, excuse me. When you order the new kit packing kit, a new ball comes in there. You just take this old one, you can toss it, you can save it, but you'll get a new ball. Put him somewhere where you won't lose him because he'll bounce all over God's creation. All right. When you go to repack these, it's a good thing to remember that you want to take note of where everything goes. All right. But particularly... With the leather packings, you want to put it in some type of motor oil at least 5 to 10 minutes before you go to repack this thing because you want to get those nice and saturated and oiled up. Otherwise, they'll split crack prematurely and you'll be right back in the same boat again. All right. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they call this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but you'll get a new one. You can look it up on the fluid section. They have directions, and they tell you exactly what it, what it is. I'm not exactly sure 100% what it's called. All right. Um, and then your packings come off in the same order as, as the new ones went on. And you'll have one little extra thing right here that slides off. Well, yeah, it slides off. I'm not exactly sure what the terminology is on this. But if you hold your piston out right there... It has a round edge and a little pointed edge right there. And you'll slide it back on just like that. Now, if you were going, key thing to remember is your piston actually sits in the housing like that. These packings come with a little V beveled edge. All of these, the little V, the beveled edge, faces up from the bottom and they go down from the top. So naturally, you would have your, your packings like this. It goes blue, leather, blue, leather, blue, leather. They all sit inside each other. So you go ahead and put that washer thing back on. You would slide all your packings back on, nice and tight. And then you wanna put this, this has a beveled edge on the inside that goes back up against those guys. You can't tell it now. But there's barely enough room for all that stuff to fit together. But that all goes back together. And what happens is when you put the outlet valve back in, it all screws nice and tight together. Okay, you see that? You get it. I always take a little bit of grease. And I always put it back on my packings just to grease them up. Just like so. And that's just some synthetic, multi-purpose grease that I use. Um... And then you remember when I was telling you about the Loctite, don't forget, very important, don't forget to put the ball back inside there or it will not function how it's supposed to. I bought this vice at Lowe's. I'm sure you can get it from any um, Home Depot, anything, any two store like that, your local hardware store. I'm sure they'll have something like that. You want to take your outlet valve and you want to go ahead and put... A couple drops. This is blue. This is medium grade. It's removable. They suggest you put red on there. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just screw that guy. I'm going to screw that right back in where it came out at. That simple. The black piece of wiper is supposed to actually click up against the outlet valve when you put it back in but it's not doing that right now because like I said this thing is old and I probably need to put a new one on when you go to put your three quarters inch wrench back on you're gonna rotate it till it bottoms out once it bottoms out 
you're gonna give it a nice tweak at the end. Good, nice tweak. All right, that's good to go. Your piston's done. Done, simple, over with. All right, next is you have your actual, uh, you're gonna have the actual housing of the piston. Inside you'll see what they call a female gland. That is a female gland right there. That comes out. Now this is a good time to actually have your set of dental picks. I didn't pull mine out, so I'm gonna just step away from the camera right quick and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little set of dental picks. In here you'll see a couple of them. Um, this is a cheap a cheap one I just got from Walmart or something. All right, we'll screw that down. As you can tell, it's cheap. I'm sitting here struggling, trying to get it just to tighten itself in. And this, like I told you before, inside here, you can see the little blue packings and stuff like that. They're inside there. You want to take a dental pick. Since these are, since I'm saving these, I'm not going to just shred them out of here. Um, of course, you... The viewer who is actually going to repack yours you'd want to pay attention no um, but like i said i'm i'm doing this video just to help you guys out on how to repack i'm not actually going to repack but it goes the same as the other one it goes teflon leather teflon leather teflon um, if you get confused like i said look how they come apart how they come out of there um and then you want to put them right back how they go in if you can't remember, in the pack, repack kit, it comes with a guide that shows you exactly how to put them back. So that's a plus. All right, if you look down inside here, you'll see there's a, that there's a recess grooved on the inside here. And um, this is what they call the male gland. This is at the very bottom. Uh, it looks very similar to the packings, but it's not. It this is called a male gland that'll that'll be the first guy like i said it's a flat edge and a tapered edge the flat edge will go straight down in there and there's a recessed groove inside you take your dental pick this is where it comes in handy and you just run it all around the inside make sure it's nice and flat like i said before the v part will go down from the top and up from the bottom go down from the top and up from the bottom it goes teflon you just pack it in there, leather, push them down, make them sure they're nice and tight, T Teflon, leather, Teflon. All right, guys, that's not rocket science. Like I told you, male gland goes down first. It goes Teflon leather, Teflon leather. The V part of it goes down from the top and up from the bottom. This is your female gland. It has a bevel groove on the inside. That goes down just like the rest. Simple. All right. That's done. Now, here is your foot valve, as some call it. Um, some call it an inlet housing, whatever you want to call it. There's a four-leaf clover-looking thing in the inside. Yours will be filled with paint, so it'll be a pain trying to get that out. You never want to take a punch or something and hit it. Um, but you can get it from the back side if you're careful. These come with a little uh, gasket, if you would, a little foam gasket. You take that out, and then now you can look down on the inside here. Um, and way down inside, there is a translucent O-ring way down here. And uh, um, your packing kit will come with a new one. You'll replace that O-ring in there. That's simple. Now, here is what is on the inside. At the very bottom, there's a recessed groove that protrudes out. This is called a carbide seat. It's very expensive for what it is, and it's also a two-part piece. If for any reason... The bigger ball here has any gouging, cutting, or anything on there. 
that would indicate there's an issue with the carbide seat. It's a two part. So if it was cutting on your ball, you could take this guy, flip it over when you go to put it back together and that'll sit in there just like that. Excuse my shaking. I just had a show, uh, soda not too long ago. So got a little bit of shaking going on. Um, and then that's everything that sits on top here is called a, a ball cage, a ball guide. I call it the four leaf clover looking thing because that's what the hell it looks like. All right. So when you go put this guy back together, you take your inlet housing, footlet valve. You want to drop your four leaf clover or your carbide seat in there. Next, you take your ball. You get a brand one, brand new one. It's a larger one that goes in the foot valve inlet housing. You drop that down in there. You take your four leaf clover looking thing and you fit that on top. That's done. You take this rubber gasket. Make sure you replace, replace the bottom of it. You put it back in there just like you got it out. That's done. All right. So what you want to do now is you want to take your piston and you want to put it back inside here. And you say, how do you do that? Well, you, you put it back in just how you took it out. Simple. You want to take it now. This is your female gland up here, as you can see. You're going to go ahead and take your piston. And you're going to go ahead and push it with your hand back in. Now, of course, that doesn't, that's not going to go all the way. This is where vice comes in handy. You're going to put it, this guy back in the vise. You're going to cinch it down. And you're going to take a dead blow hammer. And you're going to hit this, which is going to push it back down and through. A couple quick swift hits. Nothing special. Now, I'm going to take this out of the vise to show you guys. It's flush with the inlet. Oh, oh also, this is another uh, uh, white ring or translucent ring that comes in your packing kit. You replace that. This is very important. If you don't have that seal in there or it's damaged, this machine will not give it the suction it needs to, to prime or pull the paint up. Very important. But as you can see, the uh, piston is flush with the bottom there. We need to drive this down about another inch or two to where this will actually lift the connecting rod up higher where, where you can put your pin in. All right, so let's do that. You don't want to do it too far because you, you can actually push the, push the piston down and out and then you'll be right back to where you were. So we're gonna not do that. Take your punch, put it on the lip of the piston and just tap it. Like I said, you don't want to go too far down with it, but something about like that. You can't see because of the lighting, but it's it's down in there about an inch and a half. A lot of good things to do is to measure how long it was when you took it out, and that'll save you any worry and any trouble when you go to put it back together. I think we're good. I'm going to go over here now, and I'm going to, I'm just going to, Put it back in here and i'm just gonna see if i got it too high or not i think i actually did hit it a little bit too far up which is no problem you can take it by your hand and just give it a tap like that all right now you want to take your foot valve and you would just want to screw that back together like so no big deal. That screws back together. All right. Don't forget about this guy. This is your packing nut with the replaceable O-ring when you get the kit. That screws back on top of your piston. We're just looking for hand tight right now. Nothing crazy. All right. Got that hand tight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. And I'm going to show you guys what I like to do when I go to reassemble this thing. All right. So here's your piston. All right. You see, you see that that's your piston there. 
Take a pair of needle nose and go ahead and line this connecting rod up with the back where the inlet comes, where your hose comes and meets your little outlet intake, whatever that's called. Take a pair of needle nose. You can turn that guy so it's parallel with that. All right. Got your packing nut nice and tight. You're going to take this and you're going to thread that back into the hole. And you're going to thread it back into the hole just until the packing nut is about flush with that little housing. Like I said, if you got a, if you got a newer one, you ain't got to worry about this. These older ones are a bit tricky trying to get it back into because you got to actually twist the fan in the back to try and get yours to um, line back up how it's supposed to. And so that's, that right there is where it needs to be. course you can't forget this line in the back back here so you want to go ahead and twist that back on it's a line in the back I can show you there it is you screw that back on very key now what you want to do is now that you got that screw back on hand tight I'm not cinching it down just yet I've done that too um, now that you got that back just about how you want it you're gonna like I said it, it takes a little bit of uh, takes a little bit of patience because um, the piston don't always line back up with that ring up top and it's you know everything i've showed you up up until now is how you do it this is just the part where you gotta you kind of gotta mess with it just a little bit to get it just right and it can be annoying at times but like i said the new ones the new ones aren't like that you ain't gotta worry about that with the new ones they've taken all that mess and they've created something that's simple and easy all right so we're gonna try this again we're gonna screw it back in and you just want to run it run it run it till you see the piece level go ahead Try to connect that back line, just hand tight back together. All right, got that. What you wanna go ahead now is you wanna go ahead and tighten your packing nut because what happens is when you go, if you leave that loose and you go to tighten this, um, you go to tighten this without that, when you go to tighten the packing nut, it'll actually loosen You'll loosen one, tighten the other. So let's go ahead and tighten that packing nut up first. Sorry, I'm reaching in front of you now. But to tighten it, you hit it to the left. You want to make this thing, make the actual packing nut spin to your left. Your left. And you just want to hit it till it's about nice and snug. You don't want to go too hard, too heavy with it. And you're going to take your ring... You're gonna take your ring and you're gonna go ahead and tighten that bad boy back up. And on this one, you wanna do about one revolution back around. Sometimes it's easier if you take a flat head, hold it on, and hit it like that. About as tight as it wants to be i can't take it off by hand so that's good all right now you guys can't see i'm gonna back you up a little bit try to take this yep i dropped you sorry about that then dropped you 
I'm gonna put you back up. If you guys are watching this, um, just be nice. It happens. But we're gonna try to line this. Can we're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna put it into the back of the fan, which is why you want to have your machine cut off. And what you want to do is you want to line. You need you need the connecting rod to go dang up so it'll line back up with this hole so you can get this pin in here this is the most annoying part about about this whole process it ain't like it ain't like the new ones at all You ain't gotta play this guessing game with the new ones. And I may have went, I may have went, well, I haven't went up far enough yet. Like I said, it's a guessing game at this point. I could probably do this all night trying to get this thing right. But um, so like once you twist your fan enough and get this ring lined back up just right, you just go ahead, um, you just go ahead and tighten up. Uh, you wanna just go ahead and tighten up your foot valve and you wanna take your line right there and you're gonna go ahead and put it at the bottom of that sky, tighten it up, and you're good to go. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up, give me a share, give me a like. Um, I know it's a little messy, but I hope it helps you guys out. And if you have a newer one, you're lucky as hell. All right, peace, happy painting.